When you think about it, Borough is a bit of an odd thing to call a tube station. Now bear with me here. I mean, London has 32 boroughs. Historically, though, the borough is an old name for Southwark, as opposed to the city north of the river. It's an area with a lot of history. The borough dates back to the 2nd century AD and was part of the port the Romans built. Borough was at the southern end of London Bridge and was also where the roads Stane Street and Watling Street met. It first seems to have gained the name Borough at some point in the 9th century under the Saxons. The Tabard Inn on Borough High Street appears in the Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer, and the site is now marked with a plaque. The area was mostly outside the jurisdiction of the city, and so became an entertainment district over the ensuing centuries, famous for its drinking dens, theatres, bear pits, and houses of ill repute, shall we say. It was viewed as the poor relation of the city, but in recent decades it's become a little bit more chic. There are two tube stations on Borough High Street, Borough itself and London Bridge. There's also Southwark Tube Station not too far away, which is actually on the edge of Southwark, but still just about in the borough. But when Borough Station was built, it was the only tube station actually in the borough. The station was built in 1890 by the City and South London Railway. This was the first deep-level underground railway and ran from Stockwell to King William Street. The line was mostly in South London. It was only after Borough, the penultimate station, that it went under the river to King William Street. Actually, it barely even got into the city. See, in the 1880s, when the City and South London Railway was being built, underground railways were still a relatively new concept, and nobody had ever tried anything quite like the City and South London before. An electric railway constructed entirely in tunnels far below street level. Financially speaking, it made sense to stick mostly south of the river, where land was cheaper. Also, for financial reasons, the line here follows the alignment of the road. At Borough, the northbound platform is on top of the southbound platform. That's because the company were worried that they would have to compensate the owners of buildings up above. When Borough Station was opened in 1890, it looked very different. The City and South London stations incorporated rather elegant domes into their architecture. One survives at Kennington. These domes weren't purely ornamental, they were the housing for the lift machinery. But you know the Victorians, always great ones for aesthetics. Things moved fast in those early days of the underground, and within a decade the borough would gain a second station. The City and South London wanted to extend to Moorgate, but to get there they'd need to reroute. From Borough, a new set of tunnels were dug that crossed the Thames further east. King William Street was abandoned and replaced with Bank. The new tunnels also allowed interchange with the mainline terminus at London Bridge, a notable omission on the original route. In 1900 the work was complete, but Borough was, of course, no longer the only tube station in the Borough. I feel like I'm trying to break some sort of record for most uses of the word borough in a certain period of time. In 1913, the city in South London was taken over by Underground Electric Railways of London, and in 1921 the government agreed to finance a project to combine it with the Charing Cross, Euston and Hampstead Railway, another of UERL's lines. This involved widening the tunnels, a process that they thought could be done without interfering with services. They were wrong and in 1923 services were interfered with in a very significant way when the tunnel collapsed. A train passing through narrowly avoided being hit, and I actually did another video dealing with its very lucky escape. Anyway, having nearly buried a train full of passengers alive and left a whacking great hole in the middle of Newington Causeway, UERL decided that maybe keeping trains going during the works was not exactly the super cool idea they thought it was. Consequently, the line was shut until everything was completed. Borough Station reopened in 1925. The old City and South London Railway architecture had been replaced with new City and South London Railway architecture by Charles Holden. The City and South London Railway was also being extended south to Morden at the time, and you can see the same architectural style on the rebuilt borough and the extension stations. 
During the Second World War, the station found an alternative use. Remember those tunnels under the Thames that were abandoned for the line to London Bridge? Of course you do, it was only like two minutes ago. Well, they were used as air raid shelters, with Borough as an access point. After that, not a whole lot of excitement until 1980, when the station was rebuilt again. I have to say I am not a huge fan of the rebuild. I think it makes the station look like a bunker, and to be honest, whereas a lot of underground architecture has aged really well, this feels very dated. It does have this rather cool concrete roundel though, so you know, that's something. In 1999, the Jubilee Line extension opened, giving the borough another station at Southwark. Borough itself is one of the lesser used stations in central London, if you could call it central London. It's, it's in zone one, let's, let's not split hairs. In fact, during the 2020 lockdown, it found itself closed down. After reopening, it barely had time to draw breath before it was closed again, this time from January to May 2022, while rebuilding work is carried out at Bank. I suppose they didn't want to risk a centenary recreation of the 1923 incident. And that's where everything stands at the time of publishing this video. I have this weird affection for Borough. It's probably the least glamorous underground station in the Borough. But then, it did get there first. Well, I hope you enjoyed this overlooked tale from the tube. If you did, please do leave a like and perhaps subscribe for more. Thanks as ever to my always generous donors on Ko-fi and Patreon. You are the southbound tunnel to my northbound tunnel. And I'll see you all again very soon for another tale from the tube.